بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مساء الخير على الجميع أهلا بكم Good evening everyone and welcome all of you in this session designed for English speakers He <clears throat> is Dr. Kamen, the head of infection control department and the professor of faculty of medicine. And I'm presenting to you the some information, some orientation about certification of infection control. What you need to know. Okay? Uh, this session is for English speakers, so I will I will not talk in Arabic. I will just talk in English. Uh, of course, I welcome all of you, whether English speakers or even Arabic speaker. But I'm sure that even Arabic speakers will understand me. Um, <coughs> infection control is getting. Uh, important all over the world is nowadays and all of you know the story of COVID-19 uh, there is an increased demand of infection control specialists all over the world to fight COVID-19 uh, you hear me now? Or is this is, uh, is this is my? Do, do you hear me good or no? I need someone just to remind me or to just show me that if you can mute all, please do that. Uh, okay. Um, yes, clear, very good. Okay. <clears throat> so. Uh, I think I'm muted all now. Everybody now is muted. Uh, okay. Um, you want to, to mute my mic? I will mute my mic. Um, again. Uh, okay. Okay. So, um, if you specialize in infection control, you will have more job opportunities. You will get more money. You can travel to work worldwide anywhere because we are fighting a pandemic. And the pandemic means all countries in this on this earth suffer from COVID-19. And they need to start to be in the front line fighting COVID-19. So, uh, infection control as speciality is getting more and more and more important. That's why people uh, are motivated now to be certified in infection. And the certification of infection control differs in different countries. Some countries provide diploma, some others provide master. But we have an international recognized certification, the board, the American board, the CIC, the Certification of Infection Control. This is the standardized or international recognized infection control certification. And it's not difficult as master or as doctoral degree or as diploma. You just study, you, you finish, you show your interest in this specialty, then you attend a course with us to describe to you how to proceed. Then you study a few months, then you take the exam, then you pass the exam, then you become board certified. 
then you can apply for jobs and I'm sure they will take you. Okay. Uh, so today I will describe to you uh, this is the certificate of infection control. This one. The certificate, once you pass the exam, simple exam, it's not complicated. It just needs some attention, some months of studying, guidance from our courses and the academy, and you will pass the test. And you will get certified for five years. During that time, you can search for jobs and you present to them proudly your certificate and you will be having the priority for them other than the non-certified okay uh, okay <clears throat> uh, what is the topics we will talk about this time we will talk about uh, what is the cpic CIC, ABIC, you will see these abbreviations a lot. CBIC, CIC, APIC, what is that? And then what is the types of certification and the importance of certification? What is that eligibility criteria? Are you eligible to take the test or no? They will say to you, I'm sorry, we are sorry we will not accept you. So are you eligible or not? I will describe to you. Documents required. What are the documents you have to submit with your application to get accepted? Uh, what is the passing score? How many answers you should uh, answer correct? And then you can pass the test. What is the shape of the question? Question. Questions of the of the board. How it looks like we will we'll describe to you. How to prepare for the exam for the test. What are the sources of the study? From where? From which sources you should study to be, I mean, to be efficient to pass the test, to pass the exam. How to apply to take the test? What is the contents of the exam, the questions? Uh, and finally, how to reschedule your exam if you have unfavorable situation and you want to delay your appointment for the exam? What you have to do and how to do it? And what is the fees if, if, uh, if any applicable, okay? So these are the points we'll describe to you this uh, today evening. Uh, on, uh, evening by the Eastern time, it's not by Western time, because uh, our uh, attendees from America uh, now they have a morning time. But in the Middle East, we have an evening. So good morning for those attendees from America and good evening for attendees from the Middle East. Okay, let's go. Importance of the certification, knowledge. When you certify, you will have knowledge of infection control, specialty. If you like it, you will get knowledge, you will get skill, you will get competency. You 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 will uh, be able to practice evidence is infection control practice. <clears throat> you can find easily domestic and overseas jobs, especially during the era of COVID-19. You will get more money. So this is the importance of this certification and this speciality if you like it. Okay. What is the impact of certification? Impact of certification on the candidates in this specialty, it will improve the clinical outcome among patients. Uh, better ability to manage patient symptoms and more knowledge regarding practice standards and guidelines. Lower rate of 
infections in general, closing respiratory infection, respiratory infection, respiratory infections, etc. Certain infections and all the, any kind of infection, it will be decreased by certification. Why? Because you will gain a knowledge, you will gain a skill, you will gain a competency, you will practice evidence-based infection control facts after the certification. So certification means you will be certified, you will be knowledgeable, you will be skilled, you will be competent. Uh, Why we should start our course by CIC test detail? CIC means I will describe now. <clears throat> Before entering any your career pathway, any career pathway for any person or any one of you, you have to know the details of that pathway. Before spending the time, spending the money, spending the effort, and then you find you you don't find yourself in this special no get full and more and efficient information and then you decide whether you like this speciality or you dislike okay uh, so what is the meaning of cic cic is the abbreviation of this certificate certification of infection control the first letter certification of infection control IC. So certification of infection control, the name of this certificate, C I C. Now what is the mean what is the meaning of C B I C? This is the board that supervises the process of certification. Certification board of infection control. The first letter. Certification board of infection control. C B I C. So CBIC is the agency, is the identity, is the academy supervising giving the certificate. So CBIC. So what is CIC? The certificate you gain, you get after passing the test. So what's EBIC? EBIC is Association of Professional Infection. After you being passed uh, this test, you will be a member of EBIC. EBIC Association of Professional Professional of Infection Control. It's worldwide uh, association, and you will be a member of this once you pass it. So these are the abbreviations of this uh, uh, of, of the first uh, point of our content. Now, what is the type of certification? C B I C. What kind of certification? Uh, they gave to us. Actually, the Certification Board of Infection Control, CBIC, gave us three tests. The first one is Associate Infection Prevention and Control, AIBC. This certification uh, no experience required. Uh, the cost is $295. It's two hour exam with 100 questions and valid for only three years, but not new, for one time. This kind of certification is designed for those like to have some information. Uh, like to have some information about but they don't want to be specialized in this area. So the first one is uh, associate. If you want to be associate IBC, means associate infection prevention and control certification, you will pay only 295 and you go directly to the 100 questions exam duration of two hours. And once you pass the test, you will be associate of infection prevention, AIBC. And this certificate will be valid with you for three years. I don't suggest this for all of you. Because just you, 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 you pay money, you spend some time studying, some effort, uh, 
and then you just associate the infection prevention and control and only for three years and it will, it will not be renewed. So why take it? No, I do recommend it. I do not recommend it. Okay? This is for some kind of people, colleagues, that like, I mean, uh, that are curious to know what is the infection control and they can get like uh, uh, some information. Okay. Uh, the second certification is the original CIC certification, initial certification, first time certification. And this kind of certification needs to be involved with an infection control, full involvement in infection control drugs for one year, or part time involvement in infection control for in two years, plus you have the fees of this test is $375, and the duration of the test is three hours, and the total number of questions tested is 150. And this certificate is valid for five years and you can renew it. So it's valuable. I recommend it. Okay. So for you, if you like this specialty, if you want to be one of the infection control practitioners or a specialist or a manager or experts, you have to start with number two. You have to initiate your certification. Uh, some will raise the issue of one to two years working in infection control. How can I get this one? You can get it from your husband. If you are a health care worker, uh, you can get it from, uh, you can, I mean, join the infection control liaison. You can, do, you, you can be one of the infection control liaison in your hospital, or you can get, the third, I mean, a certificate from the infection control department that you work with them for some time like this. Uh, it's not difficult. And we, we sometimes we help our uh, students to get this certificate. So <clears throat> for number one, I don't know to recommend. <clears throat> for number two, I recommend it. For number three, this is a recertification. After five years of initial certification, you have to take the exam again to get recertified. Or now, currently, you can uh, do CME, Continued Medical, Educa Medical Education Unit, Credit Award. You can get Credit Award or CME Award, and then they can renew your certificate. So these are the types of certification provided by the Certification Board of Infection Control in America. Okay. What's happening now? Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, during August, September, October, November, December, no test. Is done. No even application is done. I'm sorry to say that this is, I mean, the timing of this lecture may be, uh, in my opinion, is not convenient. Because we give this for people eagering or looking to apply for infection control certification. But unfortunately, every five years, the CPIC wants to update the situation, to make changes, to cope with the changes in the world. So they choose this time, 2021, the second half of the 2021, to make the changes in this exam. So they stop the initial certification, the recertification. Even the associate IBC, they stopped all of this. And then they started to do what we call it beta testing. Beta testing is a trial, checking the new format of exam. Okay? So 
So they are preparing for the new exam format. Okay. So unfortunately, all of you will wait until early 2022 to start the to start to apply for the new exam format. Of course, inshallah, we will update all of you about the changes once approved from the CBIC. So we will just take a, I mean, a general orientation about the situation and about the CBIC and the EBIT, uh, waiting for the changes in the exam to be uh, in action, and then we will update you in another session in charge. Okay, so now no initial certification, no recertification, no associate infection prevention and control certification because they are waiting to make the changes in the exam format. What they are doing now is they providing a new test format for volunteers. <coughs> Those volunteers, we call them beta testers. Some of your colleagues choose to be involved in this and to get a discount of $100. So the fees will be like $275. Instead of $375, they will pay $275 for the for the B to be volunteered for the new exam format. And then if they succeed, they will grant it the certification. If they are not, no more recertification, no more repeating, and they have to wait until uh, early 2022. Okay? I hope you got my point. Right. Okay. So, um, what we told is the Association for Proficient Infection Prevention Control. This is the ABIC definition. And the mission of this uh, as, uh, 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 association is to create a safer world by preventing infections everywhere. EPIC members all spectrum of healthcare workers, nurses, physicians, public health, epidemiologists, microbiologists, medical technologists, and they, they are involved in many activities within the infection control specialty, like collecting, analyzing, and interpreting health data, applying uh, scientifically based infection prevention practices, isolating sorts of infection, educating healthcare workers about the infection control, serving as educator, researcher, consultant, clinical scientist, practicing in acute care hospitals, our outpatient care clinics, long-term care facilities, home health care, and medical care center. So, EBIC members are doing all these activities. Now, I want to describe to you uh, those exams. Uh, as I said, the first one is associate certificate, $295, $295 to our 100 questions, but for three years, not renewed. The second one is a computer-based test. This is the initial certification, as I said. Uh, needs one to two years experience. Uh, fee is 375 valid for five years renewed every five years. The recertification after five years, you have to recertify by taking the test or completing some hours of CME. Uh, if uh, certification expires by the fifth year, then individuals may only become certified again if eligibility criteria are met. That means the initial certification is valid for five years. 
what happens if the five years pass without any certification? We'll start from zero again. Uh, so your certifications supposed to be valid all the time. Don't be late for the certification. Uh, the test or the initial certification test is 150 questions, 150 questions, three hours time. Uh, in this test, the real question is 135, but they added uh, 15 questions uh, as a pre-test. <clears throat> because every time they want to add more questions, so they put some 15 questions each test to see <clears throat> whether these uh, questions are convenient for the testers or not. Then later they will include it in the bank of questions. The recertification is also 150 questions, uh, three hours but small, a little bit more difficult than the initial certification. Why? Because they assume that you spend five years in infection control uh, speciality. So you are gaining more experience, uh, more practice, so you can <clears throat> you can answer better. You can go pass the test with more affiliates. Um, okay. Uh, a recertification is for advanced recertifier. It's been five years, as I said. Uh, the purpose of recertification is to de demonstrate continued knowledge and mastery in the field of infection control. What is the objectives of the CIC exam? The objective is, is to identify the infectious disease process to describe the components of the infected surveillance system, to discuss the process used in preventing controlling the transmission of infection, infectious agents, to describe the components required for managing infection control program, to describe the methods used to develop education and research projects, to identify the infection control aspects of employee health. Uh, can dates are required to order the exam in the same calendar year that the recertification is due? Means what? Means if you if you take the test in 2021, so you have to renew in 2026 before December 20. By December 2026, you have to re recertify. If this is, doesn't happen, you have to start from zero again as initial certification. Okay. Um, success rate. How many of our of, of, of the candidates pass the test? What is the percent? Actually, around seventy percent of the applicants for to taking the test, seventy percent pass the, the initial test. Pass the initial test. But what about? the uh, applicant for recertification around 90 percent even if it's difficult even if it's difficult but the people get more variance uh, more time spending in the working in the speciality so you they have more capabilities of passing the test so if 100 of staff of you apply for initial certification 70 will pass the test, which is good. And if 100 of you after re uh, uh, aiming at recertification after five years of picture control practice, 90 of you will pass the test. So this is the, it's approximate figures. I want to show you that uh, those pass the test more than those fail the test. Examination fees does not schedule an examination within UK. So examination fees, once you apply for the test and then you pay the fees, $375, you have to schedule the test in any center close to your location. Okay? 
How will you get this? Through the website. Everything done through the website, cbic.org. Okay? So you apply through this website. Then once you accept it, they will direct you to a examination test or examination agency uh, close to your location in any country, worldwide. Okay? So once you apply and accept it, you have to schedule this within three months. You don't have to <laughs> choose a date of more than three months. They will not accept. So once you accept it in August 1st, so within three months, August, September, October, you have to choose the date to take the test. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> if you want to change after you after picking up a date and you want to change because you are you are not ready yet, you can delay your test date, but you have to do this one month before the test date. If you do it before one month of the test date, no charges upon you. You will not pay fee. Okay. <coughs> um, if you do it later, uh, there will there, there will be charges. If you do it late, I mean before five days, uh, you will pay some charge. If you do it within five days, they will not accept it. So this is how to deal with your schedule of examination. Okay. Uh, examination fees will not be refunded. If the eligible candidate who is approved to take the exam does not schedule it, uh, a date within 90 days, request to reschedule uh, the examination less than five days before the scheduled test date. If the candidate failed to report for examination appointment or arrived more than 30 minutes later for the appointment or fails to present appropriate identification, you don't have an identification, good identification ID at the, on the day of the exam. You will lose the examination fees. How uh, questions look like? It just, uh, it's uh, uh, a multiple choice question, single test this is the concept of the question, the single best answer. There is the stem of the question, includes the description of the situation or the scenario or the case, and then four answers. You have to pick one answer from this one. Okay? Uh, there is no penalty for wrong answer. For some other exam having a penalty if you if you answer some, one question wrong they will deduct one more mark from you no this is not applicable here here only the, the correct answer you you do you take mark the 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 incorrect answer you do you they deduct mark from you that's it so uh, examples of this this is a, a question example the primary immune response after or to communicable disease, pathogen or vaccine, is the production of IgG or IgM or IgA or IgC. This is one of the exa examples of the question. The primary response after exposure to infectious disease. Uh, the primary response after exposure to COVID-19. Okay. Can any one of you answer this question? Just by writing in the chat. If you're exposed to COVID-19 infection, what is the primary response in your body? Can you answer this? IgM, very good. So IgM, so that's why some countries start to screen people uh, for uh, COVID-19 IgM. Uh, why? Because to make sure that they are previously infected or not. Because after six months, 
IgM will be IgG. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, in an outbreak of probable foodborne illness, foodborne poisoning, food poisoning, patients develop symptoms two to four hours after eating turkey salad. The most likely cause of the organism is, and you have all this. Can any one of you answer this question? A. Uh, okay, Malika said A. Salah Wahid B. Adil Al Hassan B. Oppo B. Salah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> This is an example of one of the questions common in the uh, Friction Control Certification Board. Food poisoning that develops symptoms within two to four hours is usually staph aureus, staphylococcal aureus. P is the best answer. Why? Because staph aureus or staphylococcus aureus uh, the kind of bacteria that make that uh, make toxins. So toxins are there in this food, and once eaten by a human being, the toxins will rapidly cause food poisoning. So the short time here uh, go in favor with the Staphylococcus aureus. So B is the best. This is an example of the question. Uh, we used to describe in the course of infection control, preparing you to take the test. The presence of which of the following antibodies to hepatitis A confirms the diagnosis of acute hepatitis A. Can you answer this question? Acute hepatitis A. All the time, we describe to the students that in acute infection, we, we see IgM. In old infection, long time, we see IgG. So in this case, in acute hepatitis A infection, we used to see IgM. Same. When we deal with COVID-19 acute infection, we will see IgM only, not IgG, okay? So this is an example of, of one of the questions. And investigating an epidemic cases should be categorized according to. If you do, if you do investigation in epidemic like COVID-19 epidemic, uh, you have to categorize the cases in terms of time, place, person, when the agent holds environment, when the agent holds data concept, when the time, person, data concept. Usually, we use the epidemiologic triad, time, place, person. So A is the best answer. These are examples of these questions. I don't want to, I mean, uh, another a uh, more question, example of this question is the length of the stay for patients with healthcare acute infections are 12, 12, 12 uh, days, 13, 15, 15, 16, 20, and 30 days. What is the median? We will discuss, we will study. If you, if you intend to go through the test, you will study surveillance and statistics, including the mean, median, and mood, and what is the meaning of mean, what is the meaning of median what is the meaning of mood and all this information you will get it to be ready to take the test this is the question regarding the median and the median mean is the median number of this one the median number if you you have to arrange this number from the lowest to the highest 12 12 12 13 15 15 16 20 and 30 it's already arranged it. so pick up the median number It's 15. So 15 is the median, is the protector. This is a lot of examples regarding this. Now, what is the fees for your certification? As I just, as I told you, it's 375 standard. But 
the CBIC provided an offer for those pizza testers, for those, uh, uh, I mean, uh, applying to take the pizza test, a different exam format as a volunteer, and they granted them a discount of $100. So they paid only $275, and that is only during August and September. So these are the fees you have to pay if you want to take it. Um, the question divided into three cognitive levels. 25% of the question depends on the recall, the study. 60% of the question depends on your practice. 15% of the question depends on your analytic ability. Okay? So, if you, you want to pass the test, you have to study by 25%, you have to apply by 60%, you have to be having the analytic uh, ability uh, by 15%. This is the distribution of the question in the exam. The 25%, it's memorization of the information, facts, generalization, concept, principle. And this is the lowest level of learning outcome. Okay. Uh, questions in this area may use define list state having defined name like this. The second category of uh, question is sixty percent exactly. That's why we recommend all of our students if they are working outside the area of infection control, to volunteer, to practice infection control. Try to volunteer, to train, to do training, uh, unpaid, even unpaid training in one of the infection control departments. Why? Because you will gain 60, you, will, you can answer 60% of the question. Okay? This part, this application of, of information. Requires the ability to apply rules, methods, concepts, principles, rules, theory. Questions come in this if, then, how can X be used to Y? But like this, it's more sophisticated question, but you could answer it because you apply it to the practice. The third kind of questions, this is the, anal the analysis of the relationships between box or the organizational principles in box. You can use the differentiate, compare, contrast, all these kinds of. So, 25% depends on your studying, 60% of the question depends on your practice, 15% depends on your mind ability. Okay? What is the passing score? How many questions, if you answer correct, you will pass the test? The total questions of the test is 150. If you answer around 85 questions correct, you will pass the test. So if you answer 85 out of 150, means what? Means if you if you fail to answer 65 questions correctly, you still have the opportunity to pass the test. Okay? So 85 questions, you answer it correct, out of 150, you will pass the test. Um, and this is what we discussed. The school level, you do the test on the computer in one of the agency, exam agencies, uh, pro, we call it Prometric, and then at the end of your test, you will get your, you, 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 you will get the result. You pass, congratulations, you pass, or sorry, you didn't pass. And then you, they give you the, how many questions you answered correct. So by, uh, by the end of your test in front of the computer, you will get your result. Will get whether you pass or not pass, 
and then the official paper certification will be sent to you within a few weeks after the test to your address. Okay? This is about fail rate, as we said before. Uh, now, how to prepare for the exam? How to prepare for the exam? Maybe? Uh, okay. You need between three and six months studying. If you are good working in the area of infection control, you need three months. If you are not good, you are out of the infection control speciality and you, but, but you like it and you want to come to it and you want to be specialized in this area, probably you may need six months like this. It's not that much. Um, sources of studying. Uh, we have a primary source of studying and then secondary source of study. You have a primary box, primary source, primary reference, and then secondary. What is the primary reference? These are the, the primary reference. Epic text of infection control and epidemiology. This is the EBIC text. We call it EBIC text, Association of Professional of Infection Control and Immunity Text. This is the official book of the, this organization, EBIC text. And it, sometimes it's, uh, it's uh, volume one, volume two, and volume three. So it's three volumes. This is the reference for you, and you can study. But we in the course we gave to you, we summarize all these items, we summarize all these subjects to you to facilitate how to start. Okay? Because it's a big book. But you have to keep it as a reference for you, as a reference for your work, and as a reference for your study. And it will guide you how to pick up the most important chapters to start. The second primary reference for studying is that Ready reference for microbes. It's microbiology book. You have to study some microbiology. Uh, the, the book is Ready reference of microbiology. Then the third one is the control of communicable diseases manual, small book containing it's summarizing the how to deal with infectious disease. And the fourth book is the infection preventionist guide to the lab. So these are the primary reference the, the CBIC recommend us to study from it. If you study from the primary source, we will pass the test, inshallah. Okay? But what about the secondary reference? The secondary reference is a recommendation from the ACIB, Advisory Committee of Organization Practice. Recommendation from CDC, from EBIC, from GIA, uh, read book of pediatrics, some other books, no problem for this. But if you, primary source that is enough. If you get it, if you get it and study from it, it's enough. Okay? Uh, practice exam. We provide you practice questions in the course. Uh, if you are involved in a course with us, we will give you break questions. How to break questions? Question the same like you will find in the exam. Uh, as I as I show it to you in early in this uh, session, we have hundreds of questions similar to that come in the exam. We will train you how to deal with it. In addition to this, in the website of cbic.org, there is a 70 multiple choice question. It is, but you have to pay $35 to get this test. 70 questions. The same like questions we give to you, but we provide it free during the course. Now, how to apply for and take the test? How to apply and take the test? You apply through the website. Go to the cbic.org, then start with uh, uh, initial 
testing, choose the initial testing, and then write your information, and then they will send you email uh, with the link, and then you open your email and open the link and proceed submitting your documents until they approve your application. Now, what is your eligibility? Are you eligible to take the test or not eligible? Eligibility criteria. In order to be eligible to take the initial certification exam, board of infection control, you are working, you are accountable of infection control, in, uh, you're working, you're practicing infection control, one to two, one full time year, or two part time years, and infection control, number one. Number two, you have a healthcare field certification. You have like a diploma or a bachelor. You have a bachelor or post secondary school degrees. You have post secondary school degrees. Maybe a diploma two years, or you have bachelor four years, or you have a master, whatever. But you have to have this. In addition to what? Uh, you have to, uh, you, uh, there is an proof that you practice infection control in this area, identification of infectious disease process, surveillance and epidemiologic investigation, preventing and controlling transmission of infections, and at least two of this, employee health, management and communication, education and research, environmental care, cleaning and surveillance. All these requirements is easy to prepare. So the first, first, you are working one to two years in infection control. Second, you have a, a bachelor degree or both secondary school degree, maybe uh, an institute for two years, diploma for two years after the second school or a bachelor degree. And you work it in infection control, the one to two years in this field. Again, one of these three, including the, the, these are the three basic areas of infection control. You have to be involved in it during the break, and at least so. This is not difficult. It's easy. We will help you to do this. Okay. So you are eligible by practicing infection control, by having both secondary school certification in healthcare field, then you have to submit the attestation statement. This is the one. Attestation statement that your supervisor, your director, your manager in infection control will sign this paper for you that approves that you are practicing infection control in this case. This is the attestation statement. Uh, then you have to, these are the documents you have to submit. Attestation statement, proof or copy of your degree, uh, curriculum vitae, CV, and then official job description. So once you apply on the website, you have to attach those documents. Attestation statement, your certificate, or the bachelor certificate, your CV, and your official job description. So four documents with your application and with paying the fees, 375. And then after one week, they will send you email that uh, they accepted your application. And you have to go through an option called schedule my test in a location close to your city, okay? This is the eligibility. Again, working one to two years in a picture control department, one full year or two years part-time. Uh, you have both secondary school degree, bachelor degree or diploma. You are accountable for infection control. And then, you, you submit those documents, attestation statement, proof of degree, CV, and job description. Official job description from your master. 
OK? This statement, you can download it from the website. And it is signed by your supervisor. And we help with many of our students I signed because I'm a head of a picture control in one of the military hostels. So I used to sign uh, a station statement helping my students to apply for this test. Uh, and once they pass the test, the CBIC sent email to me notifying that my uh, student passed the test. Okay. Uh, what is the job title in, in infection control specialization? We have too many titles. You can find infection prevention net, infection control link net, RN infection control prevention net, epidemiologist, research in the net, infection control manager, infection control coordinator, infection control officer, infection control professional, infection control head. All this, I mean, uh, title, job title, you will find in the, in the all over the world. Inshallah, after part with the test, you can apply to it. Application process, I said, through the website, cbic.org, and then choose initial testing, and then go through, and then write your email, and then they will send you an email with the link, and then to go through the link, and then proceed and then submit your documents and wait until approval and then pay the money, $375 by credit card. And then after approving all, you will uh, start to schedule your test and then to take the test. This is the test, it's not difficult, okay? Uh, this is the website, cbic.org. Uh, if your application is not approved, you will receive a notice from the CBIC uh, for any deficiencies in your application. You have to submit. They will tell you, please, you have a deficiency in this paper, you have to submit it. Okay? Uh, as I said to you, once the application is approved and the money is paid, we'll go through prometric.com schedule my test, and then communicate with the Prometric exam place close to you. And they will show you their uh, vacancy seat for you to do the test. And you choose from uh, the list any suitable date for you to do it. Uh, those living in the United States, they can call this number, 800-34, 800-278, 2, 2, 2. You can call uh, between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday, and then they will uh, schedule uh, you to take the test close to your location. Um, if you want to cancel or reschedule, call the same number or go through this website. Rescheduling three days or more in advance, no charge. Okay? Rescheduling between five and 29 days, you have to pay $30 fee. No rescheduling uh, is allowed within five days from, your, from the day, this day. If you want to cancel everything, you have to pay $72 administration fee, okay? Emergency closing, if hurricane happens or any uh, unusual weather situations or uh, earthquake or volcano or whatever unusual happens and the test is closed, uh, Prometric will attempt to contact uh, candidates by phone or email, and then they delay without fee. They will delay, reschedule your test date without fee. 
Uh, okay. Uh, there is special arrangement for candidates with this. If you have a disability, you have to inform the prometric and they will prepare a suitable uh, seating for you. What to bring to the exam? When you go the day of the exam, you have to come early, 30 minutes before the time. You have to have one or two valid ID, driving license or passport or any, I, I mean, you have to have one or two valid ID, not expired ID, okay? Uh, you don't have to have personal items like the watches, uh, Accessories, they, they prevent this one. Uh, if you don't provide correct identification at the time of the exam, it's missed the appointment. Then they start last uh, few years to uh, take care of that because, I mean, of the new electronics and it can be used to, uh, I mean, by a different way, they prohibited uh, having accessories during the exam. Any, all candidates are required to remove their eye glass, okay? Jewelry and the other accessories during the test. So go without all this to make it easy for you. Jewelry and engagement rings is prohibited. Uh, also, you have to refrain from wearing uh, ornate clips, comb, uh, bullets, headband, and other hair, hair accessories. Because we fear <clears throat> of using this uh, to use the camera to get the questions of it. If candidate is caught with camera, they will prevent him from doing or her from doing the test. I mean, you have to be honest. This is the test. So personal items are not allowed during the test. Uh, so make sure that you go easy and with as much little accessories as you can. Uh, no reference materials, no paper allowed, no study materials. Uh, you don't have to bring your calculator because you have a calculator on the computer in front of you. If you want to take a break, it's from your time. It's from the time of the test. If you don't want to take the break, it's, a, it's from the time of the test. If you want to go to a list, they will uh, mean follow you, they will monitor you, and then they will start checking you again when you come back to the test area. Visitors are, uh, are not allowed during the test. This is just uh, 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 some uh, arrangement. Copyright questions, you don't have to copy the test and distribute it. This is again, it's uh, the law in the United States. How to prepare the exam? Initial steps. You have to decide what date you can be, you can be ready to take this. Six months, three months. Uh, preparation varies between people. People, some people are ready, some people are not ready. Um, you have to make a contract with yourself. I will take the test within three months, or I will take the test within six months. Okay. Assist the research abroad for the make, I mean, make the resource for studying available, like Epic Text, Easy uh, Micro Book, Control from Recovery Disease Manual, the, the primary resources I described here. Okay. Uh, read through the candidate handbook from the TBIC. You have to have a positive mindset. International test takers, they have some barrier. I mean, Arabic test takers, they have, or international, maybe also Indian or Filipino uh, or Asian in, in general. They have language barrier. 
they have a cultural barrier, okay? Because the test is available only in English, so you have to be have they have to be having a good English, okay? Other barrier is the uh, the the kind of the question because the multiple choice question is not common in other in the, in the, among international educational systems. So you have to train yourself how to deal with the multiple choice question with single best answer for chat. Okay? So the first uh, barrier is the language, the second is the culture, the third is the uh, method of the question, the multiple choice, and the fourth is the abbreviation. A lot of abbreviation. You are we are unfamiliar with the abbreviation, like ABIC, A B I C. C I T C V I T. All this are abbreviations used in many in the United States. And the test is in the United States of America. So you have to, I mean, to train yourself how to use the abbreviation. Okay. Now, what is the content of the exam? These are the content of the exam. The exam is 135 real questions with 15 questions we call them biggest. And the distribution of the questions is like this. 22 questions come from the subject identification of infectious disease process. 24 questions come from the subject surveillance and epidemiologic investigation. 25 questions come from preventing controlling the transmission of infectious agents. 11 questions come from the occupational health or on the health. 13 questions come from the management and the communication chapter. 11 questions come from the education and research chapter. 14 questions come from the environment of care chapter. And lastly, 15 questions come from the chapter of cleaning, sterilization, disinfection, and research. So the questions are distributed. So if you study only one subject like identification of infectious process, you will be able to answer only 22 questions. I will not buzz you, and you will not buzz the test. If you study the first and two chap the first uh, two chapters, you will answer, uh, you will be able to answer only 46 questions out of 150. So the questions are distributed depending on the size of the chapters in the A B test. Okay? So this, uh, this is the content of the question. Uh, as I said in the table, this is the same. Uh, what is the, 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 the items in the identification of infectious disease process? It's, a, it's how to interpret diagnostic and lab reports, how to identify practice for specimen collection, transportation, how to know the clinical signs and symptoms of infectious diseases, how to differentiate between colonization and the contamination, between prophylactic, embryonic, and therapeutic antimicrobial, and so on. The second chapter is on the how to design surveillance system to do risk assessment. Uh, to develop surveillance plan to evaluate the effectiveness of the surveillance plan, to create notification system to, to establish mechanism for identifying visual phenomena. Yeah, this is, I mean, a summary of the information you need when you will be involved in our course. We'll describe this in detail. How to collect data, how to interpret data, how to analyze data, uh, like this. Uh, a lot of, I mean, information you have to have it. How to do outbreak investigation? You face an outbreak in your hospital. How to do outbreak investigation? Uh, then the third chapter is how to prevent the infection. From this chapter, you will find 25 questions. So this is the biggest one. How to develop evidence-based infection control policy? how to collaborate with other departments, how to implement the infection control strategies, how to select use the 
districts and use their personal protective equipment, how to bless patients in isolation, how to deal with the environmental pathogens, how to deal with the patient care products, how to do, how, uh, what to know about immunization program, safe injection practice, uh, standard precautions, antimicrobial stewardship, these are items you have to know. The fourth subject is the uh, employee health, uh, how to do screening of and medical checkup and test stuff, uh, how to collaborate regarding the counseling of and follow up and work restriction. How to collaborate with the occupational health to evaluate infection prevention related data. How to uh, recognize healthcare personnel who may represent a transmission risk for patients. Uh, and so on. The sh chapter five, environment, hostel environment. How to recognize the elements important for safe care environment. How to deal with the HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, water standard construction. How to assess infection risk in construction within the hospital. How to provide recommendation to reduce the risk of infection. Uh, how to evaluate the hospital cleaning and the infection. The sixth chapter is including cleaning, sterilization, disinfection, and the exceptions. This is a CSSV. Uh, how to evaluate cleaning sterilization and disinfection. How to collaborate with other to assist the product. Uh, how to identify evaluate critical steps of cleaning, high level disinfection and sterilization. Uh, chapter number seven, education. Uh, how to assess needs, develop goals, and measurable objectives for education. How to prepare, uh, present, and coordinate education content. How to educate your staff in the, in the hospital about the infection control, about the PPE, about the N95. How to evaluate effectiveness of education. Uh, how to implement strategies for engagement of patients, family, and the other in activities. Uh, how to conduct a literature review regarding any subject, how to evaluate the literature, how to do research in infection control. Uh, and the last chapter or last subject is the management and the communication, how to do planning in infection control. Uh, how to recommend the changes in practice, how to uh, design a, a program for infection control, how to do well communication with other departments and with your peers in infection control and other hospitals, uh, how to collaborate with the internal and stakeholders. Uh, all these eight chapters, if you study these eight chapters well, and if you attend with us a course for orientation for the kids, inshallah, I will be ready to take the test. I want to thank you for attending this orientation. And now I open the floor for your questions. If you have any questions, you can write it uh, in the uh, chatting, or you can open your mic and talk to us. I'm opening the floor for uh, questions for uh, the remaining minutes. Okay. Any questions? Doctor, I want to ask just about the, the significant change from uh, the past exam and the, the PETA test exams. I think it's uh, same uh, chapters, uh, but there is a difference in the distributions of the scores just. Is this right or, uh, or there is uh, another significant change? Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Manal. Uh, the scientific content probably the same because the EBIC 6 is the same uh, and the scientific topics is the same. 
but the exam format, the question, the distribution, the passing the score, all this will be changed. Until now, we don't have any uh, clues because they are, we are in the stage of beta testing. They are trying to find a new for exam, exam format suitable for changes. We don't have this yet, but uh, for sure the scientific content is the same. The chapter will be the same, but the, the kind of the question the passing the score, the how to evaluate the score, the, I mean, how many questions, how many marks, duration of the exam, this will be changed. Uh, yes, there is, uh, we can provide you with the attestation statement. We'll guide you. If you intend to take the exam, this question from Dr. Dana. Uh, for those without any experience in picture control, if they like this specialty and want to be involved with it, we welcome all of you in this area, in this specialization, and will provide you with the science, then how to apply for the exam, will support you with the documents, don't worry about this. Once you like it and want to be involved with it in the course with us, and to be specialized in this area will help you. Okay. Questions? Okay, doctor, just I want to, to ask about the, you said the, the kind of the questions. I think it's still multiple choice or uh, there is a change on it. Uh, there will be uh, multiple choice, but maybe more advanced. Sometimes you will get more, I mean, more sophisticated uh, kind of questions because they want to change. So multiple choice questions will continue by, but with different format. We expect this, but until now, we don't have any clue. We are waiting their decision. We are waiting the new format of the question. But we expect that the multiple choice will continue. The single best answer will continue, but with more sophisticated way. Okay? Questions? What about eligibility criteria for academic staff? Eligibility criteria, um, you have your certificate of uh, graduation, it's okay. We will support you for the attestation statement. You will write the CV, uh, including some breaks in infection control. And you will get, we can help you getting the job description. So. We can solve all these documents. It's not a difficult way. Uh, if you pass the test, you will be CIC certified. And if you are B, if you will be CIC certified, you can apply for any job in infection control. In the Gulf countries, people are asking about the Gulf countries. They have a lot of challenges for infection. If you are a doctor, if you are a dentist, if you are a pharmacist, if you are a nurse, and then you got CIC certification, they will prefer you. They will get you. They will ask for you. And they will solve your problem. You will, they will register you in Saudi uh, health specialities, Saudi Council for Health Specialities, by your principal uh, categorization. If you are a doctor, you will be registered Saudi Council as a doctor, but you work as an infection control. Because we have a lot of people here working like this. They are dentists, they register the Saudi Council as a dentist, but they work in infection control just because they are CIC certified. Okay. Any questions? Uh, what is the criteria for international students and what is the process? International students. Uh, when I call it, when I say international student, I mean those students outside the United States. Because they, they consider us outside the United States as international students. So you, if you live in the Middle East or if you live in the Asia, in an Asian country, you are international student. You have a barrier. You have an English barrier, you have cultural barrier, you have a barrier, all this. 
okay? So uh, this is what I mean by international student. Uh, the application is the same within, where, whether you are in within the United States or outside the United States, because it's on through the website, and the website is available everywhere in the world. I am from Pakistan. Welcome. You can apply easily. You can apply through the website. If you are interested in this speciality. You can prepare your documents. We can help you. You can share with us the course of infection control. So we can, I mean, orient you, open your mind about the uh, subjects of the exam. We will, sure, inshallah, we will facilitate you're passing uh, this exam through our academic uh, activities. Questions? No more, no more questions? Okay. Good luck for all and see you, inshallah, in a very soon uh, course for preparing to take the test. Good luck and have a good time. Bye.